Now we have formulated our, uh, I would say, optimization problem. And now the question arises, how should we solve that? Because we cannot go ahead and manually solve like, like the way we did with our toy example. And so we need an algorithm for solving the quadratic program th that we formulated. And in order to derive that algorithm, we are going to uh, take some help from the existing literature in uh, optimization. Uh, especially beginning with what are quadratic programs and there are many versions of these and we are looking at a quadratic program a quadratic program in standard form and the good news for us is that uh, there's a ton of literature already in optimization on how to solve quadratic programs and so there are like some really good techniques available and we're looking at one of them so any quadratic program in uh, like standard form is given by this representation that you're trying to minimize over some u uh, this objective function which is half of u transpose q u plus p transpose u subject to some constraints and there is like this important one you might see in certain uh, like I would say let me to stay consistent with the textbook. In some uh, like optimization textbooks, you'll find that this is like less than the one that I was using earlier. Uh, and but but because I'm trying to stay consistent with what's there in the textbook, so let's like keep it as it is. So what are these like variables in here? What is the the meaning of these? Well, uh, let me write it down. So Q is a matrix. It's a Q by Q matrix. Q by Q matrix. And A is also a matrix. So A is a N by Q matrix in the uh, constraint. And P, yeah. So here, here you see that there, there is a linear term, this one. And then there is this like quadratic term. So what is that linear term signifying? It's again, it's a vector, which is like Q times 1, right? And what else is left? What is this C? Right, so this C is again a vector, so is a vector with dimensions n times one, right? And you, uh, all right. So what exactly are we supposed to find? Because like this U is left, obviously, and so that's what we solve for in this uh, uh, quadratic program. And then U is the, is the thing that we'll be solving for. And it's in this like some, Q space. All right. So now we have defined these variables in, in standard form, and these are known as Q. And the order usually that's followed is like Q, P, A, C. And that, that also like is logical because like first the objective function and then the constraints. And so regardless, like these are my user defined parameters. So I have to figure these out from my problem formulation, from my problem definition. And once I have them, once I have the Q by Q matrix when I have uh, and the P uh, vector, the C vector and the A, A matrix, I'm good to go and solve this. All I have to do is like take this into a quadratic program, right? And put it into a qu quadratic programming algorithm that solves for U and that will return something that's an optimal U and I'm denoting it by U star. So it's as simple as that. And so many packages are available as of now. I think uh, Python offers like a whole set of uh, packages for solving this quadratic program. Uh, MATLAB has their own packages. There are many other uh, that offer similar packages. In, so there are many solvers that are available for solving that. And we are not like specifically going into the details of how that is done because that's a topic for uh, optimization. If you're taking some convex optimization classes, you will definitely come across them. Now, what we'll do is we can use those to solve our problem of this optimal hyperplane. But the only thing that's left for us to figure out is that what are these like Q, P, A, and C in our problem? Because our problem like, of course, like had similarities with this, but we really need like a concrete way of con like creating this similarity between our problem and this problem. And then we are good to go because then we'll be using a solver. All right. So what exactly were we doing in our problem? We were trying to find what were we finding in our problem? We were solving for B and W, right? And so I'm defining this new term like U that is equal to this B and W, which is in this R D plus one space because of the bias, of course. So there is like D plus one. And if you remember what we wanted to minimize, 
this was our objective function, was half of w transpose w. And can I put this objective function in my uh, quadratic, the standard quadratic programming form? If I can, then I am good to go ahead and take all these like variables and put them in the uh, solver and I'll get an optimal uh, u, which in my case is like b and w. All right. So yes, I can do something about the objective function. And what I'm doing is like a little bit of rearrangement and this might like take some time to kind of understand what I'm doing, uh, but will, will become pretty evident. Uh, so I can rewrite this as, and I'll talk about what I'm, I'm doing here. Let me just like write it before I get confused. So this, if you do that, and this should be a column, right? B, think so right so we can rewrite this as, as something like like this and you can like go in and try to like uh, evaluate this and you will get w transpose w of course so what exactly are these terms here my and let me write it here so my id is my d by d identity matrix my zero d is the d dimensional zero vector the dimensional zero vector. What else remains? And all right, so that's fine. Can I like do something about this here, de depending on like what I defined my u as? Well, of course, I can rewrite this as like u transpose this thing, whatever that thing is, uh, zero identity, and then u, right? coming somewhat close to what we are trying to achieve. Now here the quadratic term can be uh, considered this, right? So this is my Q in a certain way, right? And of course there is no linear term because like it has this like linear term and we don't have it. So maybe I can say my P, which was like the linear uh, one, is my zero in D plus one, right? And okay, so this is my objective function for what about my constraints? Like, because I have to bring my constraints also to this form, this a u greater than equal to c. And if I think about my constraints, right, my, const my nth constraint, any constraint in my entire, like whatever number of data points I have, was something like this, right, greater than equal to one. This was my original constraint. And this is, of course, equivalent to, if we are writing it in a different notation, can be written as, uh, y1 and then y y n sorry x n transpose u greater than equal to one so we can rewrite it as, as something like this you can actually check for like y1 y2 y3 and of course for any y n we can write it like this and so here this corresponds to some a right some some a can be like y n right one and x n right transpose from here from this thing and I can have like my c of n as one right and so I'm interested in finding my matrix a and then my matrix a can consist of like all of these and multiplied by this right oh, sorry not multiplied on the right hand side yeah could be this so basically what I'm saying is matrix a will contain rows that are related to my data matrix augmented with these like column of ones and in fact, my nth row of my A is just like the nth row of the data matrix multiplied by its label Yn. So the constraint vector C equals like this thing. My final C will be like 1n, right? So that big C is going to be 1n ones, right? N dimensional vector of ones. That's a better way to put it. And A is going to be all these uh, these rows, right? Put, in, put together in, in, in a matrix. All right. So now I've figured how to find my C, how to find my A, and uh, sorry, like how to formulate it and in terms of like my quadratic program and then Q uh, and P, right? So what exactly do we need it? Like we needed Q, P, A, C. So we have identified, I'll write it down. We have identified Q, P, a, C, which is good news. 
and what we can what we want to do now like we can construct our solution by like of course putting it into a quadratic programming solver and getting my u star which in our case is going to be these two things my b star and my w star right so this is my optimal bias and weights and this is going to be my like my hyperplane right this is going to be my uh, optimal hyperplane all right so this Overall algorithm, also termed as the linear hard margin SVM with QP, is given here. So, like, if P is some, like, vector of zeros and C is an dimensional vector of ones, we can construct the matrices from the data, of course, the Q and the A matrices here and here, and then put them in a solver, this QP solver, QP, AC are, are like, the inputs to my solver, which gives me the optimal uh, U star, and then... The question arises, what is my final hypothesis? Well, my hypothesis is this, because this is, of course, a classification problem, where I have these optimal weights and my optimal bias. That is nothing but this entire thing is defining my hyperplane. All right. So there is this nice exercise given with our, like, toy data set where we construct my Q and my A using my X and Ys. Uh, so I can construct that, of course, depending on the dimensionality of, of the data and depending on these values and try to like solve it by hand, right? Uh, or like this example is already uh, given here. So this is like our toy example. I would write it down that way, right? And based on our initial data set, if you remember this one, the one that we just like created here, this one, uh, we constructed our Q and our P and, and C are, are, I think, quite straightforward. C is just like those N1s, and P is just like those D zeros, right? And then you have, like, you can construct A based on this formulation here, right? Because remember, the nth row in that is going to be Yn times the vector 1 Xn, and that's it. That's all you need to do here to construct your A. And put it in some solver, maybe, if you are familiar with some of the Python solver. And then you can like get the optimal B, W1, W2. And remember, this was the solution that we were getting in like when we were solving this uh, problem by hand. And when we're doing it manually, of course, this is obtained in less than a millisecond if you're using some uh, already, like some, some good solver, essentially. So this problem is a convex optimization problem. Like as long as we have these plus ones and minus ones in our uh, labels or our uh, categories, in the y values, like then this problem has a unique solution, right? What you're doing in this algorithm is like each row is multiplied by the y value to construct my a. My q depends on the, the data dimension itself. And just like with these four values as inputs, I can quickly solve for my, my uh, SVM. And that is my support vector machine, which is nothing but my maximum uh, modular classifier, which is like the optimal hyperplane. So the efficiency of my algorithm depends on the solver itself. Many specific solvers have come up that are that are uh, focused on solving SVM type problems, and they are like really really fast. Uh, and of course, what you're trying to find is like this optimal hyperplane. But it's also a perceptron if you think about it. What is my optimal hyperplane? It's a perceptron, so it's uh, obviously gets the good generalization properties of the perceptron from there along with the robustness that my SVM is already offering, right? And this problem can be solved in polynomial time, has a unique solution. Why? Because my Q is positive semi-definite. So that's that's why this is like such a good uh, solution to my problem in general. Uh, all right, let's look at examples. Now that we have looked at uh, how this algorithm works, how should we be solving for uh, our optimal hyperplane. So let's look at this example. So here we are looking at uh, the SVM separator where this black line is my target function. And as you can tell, so we have like these three support vectors and this this thing, this region here is the, the fatness essentially of my you know, hyperplane. And as you can tell, if we throw away like all the other data points, we'll still have the same hyperplane. And in some ways, this algorithm overall of, of using support vector machines is, is deterministic in some sense. You just like give me the data and I have the hyperplane. Uh, all right. So the importance of this here is, is, uh, is lies in this picture on the right hand side where we are comparing like my uh, PLA with my support vector machine. And this is an histogram of E out for 
PLA classifiers using random ordering of data. And why we wanted to do that? Because we wanted to compare like both the algorithms, uh, SVM versus uh, PLA. And this is the E out as you can see in red for SVM. And in this experiment, what we did was, and this is like given in the book, of course, PLA updates weights using the misclassified point, let's say some Xn with lowest index N. So that was the ordering that was used. And so depending on the ordering of the data, PLA can sometimes get lucky and beat SVM, right? You can see many instances of that. And sometimes it's much worse. So the support vector machine classifier does not depend on ordering of data, right? And so that's why this is so robust. And that's why we get this uh, nice uh, solution for SVM. Uh, all right, uh, let's compare finally before we end this lecture, let's compare uh, SVM and regularization. So this is like the optimal hyperplane and regularization. Uh, the objective function is to minimize the weights in this case and in regularization is to minimize E in. Uh, the constraints are E in equals zero. The constraints in my regularization are that uh, this uh, weight decay has some like kind of uh, a budget, right? So again, like, Putting it all together in regularization, I'm trying to minimize my E in this thing here, given a budget C for the weights. Now for the optimal hyperplane, which is here, right? Um, in, in SVM, we are trying to minimize these weights, W transpose W, subject to a budget on E in, which is E in equals zero itself. All right. So in some sense, my support vector machine is doing automatic weight decay regularization, right? Because I am trying to uh, what is regularization giving me? It is giving us the weight budget, right? It gives us the weight budget, like minimize E in subject to that weight, weight budget. All right. Optimal hyperplane is like finding the separator that has the minimum possible budget because I'm ensuring E in equals zero. So I'm getting the minimum possible there. So in some ways, this is like the simplest possible way of, of implementing somewhat of a similar kind of a classifier, I would say. And this goes back to our discussion of the Occam's razor when we said like the simplest possible uh, selection and, and the, like selecting the simplest possible model. And here is the implementation in, in the form of uh, the optimal hyperplane. Uh, all right, so that was it in SVMs in this lecture 23. In the next lecture, we'll investigate this a little more quantitatively because today's lecture was focused more on um, deriving things, deriving the problem and solving the problem. Now, an important question that still remains is like, is this fat test or this like maximum margin hyperplane better than the thin ones in general? And, and why is that? So that's the question that we're going to answer in uh, the next lecture. All right. Thank you.